Tapissary is an invented language of glyphs that I began in 1977. It has undergone broad transformations over the years. You'll see that it's not only a system of written pictures, but it also has a cyclic approach to grammar, which I'll touch on briefly toward the end of this film. Here's a sampling of its history. These pages show the early stages of its development. I had stylized sign language of the deaf into simple drawn characters, threw in some influence from Egyptian hieroglyphics, Chinese, and also added my own pictures. By 1979, those pictures had been converted into their shorthand forms, which you see here. Just a few years later, in 1983, I transferred all the vocabulary into a standard dictionary of 2,000 words. My project for the new millennium required all common words to have a glyph. There are currently close to 8,000 characters in my dictionary. Because tapestry is pictographic, I would often take notes at school lectures using some of my glyphs for the more common words. One character for one word is a lot quicker to write than, say, four or more letters for one word. I also wrote several of my journals in tapestry. Here's a selection of some books and a scroll. I have also displayed art exhibits highlighting my language. If you watch the film Hieroglyphic Collages on YouTube, you'll see the exhibit of tapestry. Since mid-2008, I've been writing a tapest version of Alice in Wonderland. My intention is to present the grammar of tapestry by way of the story. These are notes. The finished product will take another form. I'll be explaining an English version of spoken tapestry in this film. It matches my glyphs with English vocabulary. Tapestry's first layer of grammar aligns with English, so you won't have any trouble constructing sentences. The second layer, called the cyclic grammar, has no equivalent in any other language. At the end of the film, I'll take a moment to talk about it. I will only skim the concept in this film, as it would require quite a bit more time to explain. Put on your seatbelt. I'll be covering the basics in the span of a couple minutes. You'll see that tapestry is quite easy at this stage. Because tapestry's base grammar conforms with English, all you need to know are a few simple elements. Let's start with the verb conjugation. This crooked bar over a verb makes it third person singular. A bird flies. A car travels. She knows. There are some irregular verbs in tapestry. The word is has no crooked bar over it, and it is written like this. This is a bird. This is a car. Now let's move on to the plural. Easy as putting a straight bar over your noun. Birds, cars, languages. Birds fly over fields. Cars travel over roads. You know languages. Ready for the past tense? There are 24 irregular verbs in tapestry, but I will only present the regular ones here for you. Simply add the forward slash under the verb to make it past tense. Birds flew over fields. Cars traveled over roads. He learned a language. The future tense, on the other hand, has no irregular forms, though it does have two forms from which you can choose. The first is like English, inserting the word will before the verb. The second is formed by placing the forward slash above the verb. Both ways are equally acceptable. Birds will fly over fields. Birds will fly over fields. The progressive form, ing, takes this marker after the verb. Birds are flying over fields. Cars are traveling over roads. He is learning a language. The article the has six forms. They tell something about the physical makeup of the noun in question. They are flexible, so no article is assigned specifically to each noun. Here's what I mean. The malleable form of the describes flexible surfaces such as paper, fabric, leather, and therefore living creatures, leaves, etc. also take this form. The bird the person, the magazine, the curtain.
The solid form of the shows the hardness of an object, the truck, the building, the coin. The liquid form of the describes such words as water, alcohol, oceans, the river, the cool water, the distant stream. The gaseous form of the includes such words as the smog, the tornado, the ozone layer. The ideological form of the is abstract. The best idea the news travels around. The composite article is used when a noun is composed of a large percentage of two or more of the previous qualities. School, for instance, is not only the building, which is a solid, but also the students, who are malleable, and learning, which is ideological. Of course, if you want to stress the school as being a human institution, you can use the malleable article. If you mean school solely as the buildings, you can use the solid article. But if you mean it as a whole, then the composite article comes into play. This is a very commonly used article. The school. The pain. The concert. Okay, that covers the article the. Do you want to have some fun with it? Use the liquid article with air to mean the very humid air. Or use the solid article with water to suggest ice. The articles are meant to be flexible, since nouns themselves have more than a single identity. Don't think that because a river is liquid, that you cannot use the solid article to indicate the hard strength of white water currents, or at the ocean where the crash of a large wave over your head hammers you down to kiss the sand. Be a poet when the right phrase calls for it. The genitive case shows possession. Place a backward comma under the possessor. The woman's girdle was too tight. The geyser's force defied gravity. A simple backward slash over the verb will produce the negative. Britain isn't anywhere near the Pacific Ocean. The fish didn't like cookies in the aquarium. Alternate forward one line, then backward the next when reading tapestry. Most words are written the same whether you travel left to right or right to left on a page. But many common words have a special backward form to help signal direction to read. I am in the car. I am in the car. Once the base grammar is understood, the cyclic grammar has a foothold on which to layer itself. Its concept is related to the cycle of birth and death, coming into existence, growing, reaching adulthood, using one's life for goals, withering, and finally vanishing. The sequence of these qualities is universal, including such examples as watching television or doing homework. For instance, a student connected with their assignment shows growth, but if that student is bored with the work and is daydreaming about getting out, a withering attitude toward the homework is evident, and the cycle gears itself down another path or seeds to a new cycle. Cycles are simultaneously the ordering of time combined with the defining qualities or attitude in each sentence. In other words, they define both the pattern and the texture of time. Each time you apply a cycle, you are plotting the movement of relationships from one sentence to the next. The cyclic grammar handles these coordinates by way of turns of phrases. Here's an example of the same sentence viewed in two different locations on the cycle, and thereby respecting their relative properties. I'm doing my homework. Withering. I'm wondering my done homework. Growth. My business is taking the homework. A coordinate used frequently in a text sets up a key around which the other coordinates serve as accents. This phenomenon creates a woven rhythm of the cycle. Fittingly, tapestry takes its name from the word tapestry, it weaves its glyphic pictures onto the page by way of grammatical threads. For more on this, please visit tapestry.com.